Hello, everyone. All you beautiful souls out there, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me again today. Whew, this is day seven of the Cosmic Wave of Love. And my internet has been doing interesting things. So um just uh, want you to know that uh, <laughs> if it goes down for any reason, I will move to my phone and uh, do the live on, on my phone. So um, in the meantime, let's just keep hope that all will stay well. So we are talking about this cosmic wave of love that has been coming to the planet since the 21st, uh, which is bringing much greater light through all of our, everyone on the planet it has an opportunity and is receiving this light at whatever percentage level they are able to receive it. And, and I want you to know that the choice that you make to participate, to allow divine love and the divine frequencies of healing to move through you, the greater the benefit that you will have, but everyone will benefit regardless. So we are divine children and uh, of the light that has created us. This process of these nine days is, the, is an opportunity to continue to bring in more light, to push out what no longer serves us, uh, what keeps us from expressing more light, experiencing more love in ourselves and in our bodies. So there's lots of reasons for people having difficulties with these things. Just a second, I'm going to try and move my computer over a little bit. Boy, we've been having troubles with settings here. Um, <clears throat> okay, so there are things that are in the way of people not experiencing their light. And it can be uh, fear, which is part of what humanity has been experiencing for thousands of years. The separation from oneness, the separation from um, our what we call our home, where we've come from originally, um, and the self that is here now, that f experiences abandonment, experiences fear, experiences betrayal. So there is a lot that goes on in the psyche of the human that can either keep us present in love or keeps moves us into separation. And we get stuck in the stories of how we are betrayed or how we are victimized and what's happened to us in our lives and in our past lives. And these are real events in the middle of illusion. So we, uh, there are lessons for us in how to anchor love and how to practice forgiveness and how to be able to discern the real from the illusion. And it's a trick. I mean, even the most accomplished people who have done a lot of meditation they're all, we're all have an opportunity to be tripped up. Um, and so just know that you are not alone in this. So today what I wanted to do, because yesterday we forgot, we uh, covered self-forgiveness. And uh, today I'd like to do forgiveness of God. And I know a lot of people are going like, how can you be mad at God? How, why would you have to forgive God? Why would anybody be mad, angry at God? Well, and I had that very, very same response. Um, when I was told by my guides that I had some personal clearing to do that had to do with my forgiving God because I had cursed my relationship with the divine 35 times. Well, I don't know about you, but I went into a place of absolute horror that I would have cursed my relationship with God? That just sounded, seemed impossible. But then they said, let us show you why you cursed your relationship with God. From a human perspective. And oh my gosh, I totally got it. I totally understood that I cursed God because of the pain and the suffering of humanity. I began to have a lot of compassion for myself 
and for others who are angry with God and who want nothing to do with God, like religion, forget it. Um, divine energy, forget it. Like, they don't want anything to do with it. Now, because of my history and having done a couple of other lifetimes of doing some clearing, I did have this inside me, this desire and need and want to be connected to the source of all that is, whether you call it God, whether you call it divine, whether you call it creator, great spirit, doesn't matter. Whatever religious background or non-religious, if you're an atheist, there are many people who are atheists who are just incredibly beautiful human beings and they believe in the nature that's around them. They believe in the force of love and life that exists in front of them that they partake of. So let's not judge other people for where they are because sometimes some of the most non-religious people are the most loving, gentle, kind, and compassionate people. They're not stuck in the rhetoric of a particular, you know, fundamentalist way of looking at life. So getting back to why I was angry with God. And I cried buckets of tears, buckets for about a year as I was clearing many, 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 many lifetimes of what I had witnessed and what I had um, happened to me. I chose many, many lifetimes ago, like many on the planet. There's about 990-some million of us people who are considered star seeds and light workers that we've come in to show the way toward love, to show the way back toward God, to show other people what it's like to try to be loving and forgiving. Now, don't forget, we were also learning on the way. Don't forget that even when we were downloaded with all this information and we would come into a body, that the veil would drop between the consciousness of the light that we just came from and the consciousness of the planetary energy, which was very dense. So, when I would give my life to God, in service to God, and we know this, from historically around the planet, your local people, your community people, your state people, your national people, your international people have died, have suffered, have been tortured at the hands of abusers who wanted to have power over others, who wanted to kill the light that you and I are because their job was to be the testers of our light. The, you know, like, how much do you love God? Do you love the God, uh, do you love God or the divine enough to forgive the greatest atrocities that could happen to you? And that was a huge test. So I want to share this little story um, of what one of the ways that um, I first learned about how to do forgiveness was in 2000 when this beautiful young woman came to see me for a healing session. And <clears throat> in that healing session, as we prepared to go do it, I, I pulled my chair up to the, to the massage table. And the minute I did, there was like this little video that went on. And I heard this voice of my spiritual teacher say to me, and can you forgive this? Are you willing to forgive the soul for doing this to you? And what was shown to me was that I was being skinned alive for being a healer and spiritual teacher. And I sat there and trembled down to the core of my bones as I was watching this video. And of course I started to cry and I was not allowed to say one word that this person had done this to me in another life. My job was to forgive this person, to not judge nothing, but to forgive. And of course she asked me why I was crying and I said, I just saw something very sad. I was gonna put some music on and go to the restroom and collect myself. And I sat on the restroom floor and sobbed. I could not believe what I was seeing. I could not believe that the cellular memory was so visceral within me that it might as well have been happening in that moment. 
And then I was asked again, can you forgive this? And I said, how does anyone forgive a heinous crime like this against another human being? And the sweetest answer I got was, you can't. Only the God or divine in you can do this with you and for you in all the places you are unable and or unwilling to do that forgiveness. That particular event, and I've had that exact experience happen several other lifetimes with other people, of course, I was told I'd curse that person to eternal hell. I also cursed God for allowing this to happen to me when I was in service to the divine. It just seemed too horrendous for words. So I had to pull it together and then I was told because I sent her to eternal hell there was a piece of me that went there too. And now eternal hell is an illusion in, in terms of the true reality of the cosmos. It is not real. However, we can make it real. It's an astral projection of what we make real. And it is a very real place in that reality. So they said, I, we can't take all of your soul home unless you forgive this person. Because part of you is with this person in hell. So I had to do that work. And then I had to forgive God for allowing this to happen to me. And again, I had to go and say, okay, God, I need your help. I don't know how to forgive this. Not only of this person, but why God would let this happen to somebody who's loving and being in service to God. Now, throughout history, we know that great beings of great light, great teachers, have had these kinds of things happen. Jesus being, of course, the epitome of what we know in the Western world of that energy. And then there are the Sikh gurus. There's many stories you know, about them being boiled in oil and forgiving other people and then, you know, they're being dismembered and they're going, oh, you forgot this particular knuckle. And you're like, what? <laughs> because they know it's an illusion. They know that the body is a temporary place. So forgiving God becomes a big deal when really horrible things have happened to you and things that you witness for other people to have happen. It's, it's very challenging. And when I saw all the lifetimes in which I would see, like when I was a nun, a, a Buddhist nun in one lifetime. I was not a leader. I was just a nun. But I was not down where the, um, uh, I guess you would say compound or ashram was when this particular event came, came along. But there were marauders that came in, raped, pillaged, murdered, almost the entire ashram of monks and nuns. And I'm sitting there horrified, wondering how could deity allow this? And these are people who are daily in service. It happened to me when I was a Jesuit priest and I was a man and saw that others came in and killed an entire um, you know, church and, and the people who worked there. There were times when we were small villagers who were living a simple life and people came in and raped and tortured people or starved people. So when these things happen and when you get your hands cut off for being a spiritual healer, you get your eyes taken out because you can see beyond the 3D seeing. You get your legs cut off so that you can't move to go do your spiritual work. There's a lot to forgive. And I know I've worked with um, many people who've got tremendous fear 
and rage around God. And like there's a part of them that wants to connect to divinity, that wants to be part of spirituality. But there is this aversion and pull at the same time because of this unresolved stuff that is inside their cellular memory. It can even be inside your cellular memory from ancestors that have experienced being ostracized, tortured, and traumatized for being a particular religion that doesn't go with something else or seeing beyond the scope of the narrow force of uh, the thought of, of a particular religion and seeing that people are much bigger and broader than all of this. And they're, you know, shunned, thrown out. And they feel like, why is this happening? Because I'm seeing that there's so much love. So I have one person in my life who is married to this wonderful, wonderful man. And he doesn't even know what a high frequency he is spiritually. And a lot of people think, well, he's totally asleep. And when I checked his spiritual frequency, I was like, holy cow, this guy has a history. You cannot be this high spiritual frequency without having done some meditation, devotional work, selfless service in many lives. And when I looked at that, and then I could see what the reason was that he didn't want anything to do with religion. He didn't want anything to do with spirituality. He didn't want anything to do with metaphysics because he'd been tortured to death so many lifetimes for being a holy person. He witnessed, like I'd witnessed, cruelty from human to human beyond belief which makes you doubt that there could even be a God. How could a loving God allow this to happen? Well, all of these are lessons. It's about the darkness standing up against the light. And it's testing the light's ability to love, to forgive, to see beyond the illusion. And that's very hard. It's very hard for all of us to do that. So let's know to not judge ourselves or judge others for being angry with God. Sometimes in this lifetime, people have experienced horrific abuse themselves. And they may be churchgoers and be married to a churchgoer and they don't understand how can this be. How can a loving God allow me to be abused? Sometimes it's karmic. Sometimes people experience abuse because they've been abusers. Sometimes it's a, an opportunity for a lesson to forgive. But no matter what, in order to ascend with this light that's coming through, we must let go of all those things that could be obstacles in our way, knowingly or unknowingly. Now, I happen to be able to see the Akashic Records, which the Akashic Records means the records of the soul, of your past lives, or parallel lives. I mean, I, they, they say all those lives are going on at the same time. But because we are in linear time here, we have to kind of call it past, present, and future, just so that people have a frame of reference to understand this. So forgiving God is a really, really big deal. And let's go do that now. And I will help you. And it doesn't matter how many lifetimes of unforgiveness you have to God. It doesn't matter how many lifetimes that you've condemned or cursed your relationship with God. It's okay. The divine totally understands why we do this. When they showed it to me, there was nothing but the most gentle, loving, compassion that was being showered upon me as I was being held looking at this phenomenal pain and suffering from a human level. So let's go do this. What do you say? Look, 
The sun is shining brightly. Outside of Seattle here, it's 12 degrees. It's darned cold. We have a lot of snow. But there's sunshine, there's love, and there's life. Life and light. Okay, so let's get our bodies ready. All right, let's start with that beautiful white tornado of light. Give your angels, whether you have hundreds or thousands of angels, get them all to work with you in unison. Bring a white tornado of light around your energy field. Take in some deep breaths and give you permission for whatever in your worldly life has gotten in the way, stuck in your craw, left a bad taste in your mouth, or just you want to just take your you know thoughts of today and yesterday to be washed away and just cleaned. So your field allow it just be drained and lifted away. Take another big breath of white light, running it around you. Bring it drain away. Finding that calm place in your center somewhere. Sometimes people are called to maybe the right or left limbic brain area. Some people are called to their third eye. Some people to their chin, which as I've said before, is like the, the bottom of your um, first chakra, the perineum area. Or perhaps you feel really safe and comfortable connecting to your heart or your throat. Somebody left me a text message yesterday. I had to connect to my ear lobe because that was the only place I felt safe. And I thought that was interesting. So we'll go find that safe space to move into. Maybe it's your thigh. Or your ankle, or your toes. Just give permission for love to start moving through your energy field. And so they're asking that we first begin with bringing in the color yellow. Third chakra energy, which is your solar plexus area underneath the, underneath your rib cage, above your belly button. It's where we choose to either hold judgment, condemnation, curses, or acceptance and surrender, sweet surrender of what is and what was, so you can let it go. So let's get permission for the yellow frequency of light to move through from very pale yellow into the lemon yellow first. So as we move, do this forgiveness, allow that yellow, that lemon yellow to move in and to neutralize the judgments, the curses and the condemnations. And then later that will change to a nice buttery golden yellow to bring balance and acceptance. And it may not happen today. It may be in your outer field and as it comes closer, as you do more forgiveness, more letting go, it'll, it'll bring healing and harmony to all of your organs and glands in that third chakra where we hold judgment. Uh, they're asking that we open up our right hand and just Leave it palm up on your chair or your lap. And we're going to allow this, the energy of our judgment to release through the right side of our body, through the right hand and the right wrist and the hand. Breathing in royal blue and allow it to come into your field three to five thousand feet. Some people can hold seven thousand feet. Remembering royal blue is the consciousness of God connected to the human soul and the body. And the consciousness of God is God's wisdom, God's power, God's love, God's truth that we're all connected to in the center of our being. 
thanking your angels now for bringing these colors in, holding them in your field, allowing you to like let your soul bathe in that. Allowing it to be like a beautiful wave of light just moving through your field, down your body, through your field and through your chakras, connecting your higher self with all the lower chakras, with your body, with your limbs. Some of you might be getting goosebumps doing this, knowing and for giving permission for the divine to move through. Now, bring in the violet spectrum of light, God's love and support for you in the body. Physical, supportive, uh, survival, material things, the emotional support of healing, the mental support for balance, the spiritual support for clearing and strength to do your physical and spiritual work together. Good. And they're going to shower us with pink light afterwards. All right. So just assume that you might have cursed your relationship with God even one time. Think about how many times in this lifetime you might have said, you know, damn it, God, or God damn it. Or is there a God? If all of you can recall is this lifetime, it's fine. Most of us have lived multiple lives. Most of us have a ton of stuff that we need to let go of. Just assume that somewhere in your history as a soul, you made this error. So let's go take care of that now. I want you to put all the errors into a big circle. Maybe a basket, maybe a tray. Maybe it's your living room table, your dining room table, your kitchen, wherever you want to put all the stuff that might have gone wrong that you haven't made peace with. Your field is all set. Call your higher self in now, fully into your body, down your spine, fully into your body with you. Now, I want you to remember that oftentimes it is difficult to forgive others or to forgive yourself or to forgive God. So what we did yesterday, we do again today. We give the divine or God within us permission to do the forgiving with us and for us in all the places we've been unable and or unwilling to forgive atrocities that we've either witnessed or received that we just don't know how to let go of. Know that the divine knows exactly the corridors in us that will allow that to be released. <clears throat> so here we go. With all your angels, with all your guides, with your higher self in place. Whatever you're angry about, whatever you're sad about with God, it's okay to own it. It's already been forgiven. Remember, God or the divine forgives us the instant that we make a mistake. It is we who keep holding on and not letting go. So let it go. So Mother, Father, God, creator of all that is. We thank you for pulling and canceling. All negative thought forms, oaths, vows, decrees, judgments, condemnations, and curses on my relationship with God, or our relationship with God. For each of you, it's best to say for my relationship with God. I give permission to the God within me 
to do the forgiving with me and for me in all the places I've been unable and or unwilling to forgive God for the atrocities or harm that has come to me, to those that I've loved in this body and other bodies, on in this dimension and on other planes of existence. I also choose to cancel at this time any words like, I hate God, I don't believe in God, there is no God, or divine, or creator. And there's no way I'll ever forgive God for allowing this to happen. Let's pull and cancel that one, whatever that was. Canceling, I know, I know forgive God to, I absolutely do in a moment. So I want you to just go through your heart and your mind. What If you have any negativity around your relationship with God, or you don't understand what the reason is that God allows certain things to happen, we are all the expression of divinity. The unhealed and the healed and the healing we know we're all in different places. Just forgive whatever it is. Just be willing to let it go. Let it go so that the light of who you are and the light that's coming through the planet at this time can move you and move all of this energy through you and out. So thank you, Mother, Father, God, for pulling and canceling all of these programs, all of these words. Thank you for pulling and canceling them on all three levels and resolving them on the history level. Resolving them in all my chakras and all chakra levels as divinely ordained, as the divine in me ordains at this moment in time. We thank you for sending all of these words, thought forms, decrees, condemnations, etc. up into the Divine's Holy Light. Along with any entities that might be holding these memories and experiences in place. Any dark energies that might be in there in our grid that need to also be sent up. I, in my sovereign self, now give permission for the divine to pull all of that energy off of me, away from me, sending it all up into the divine's holy light to be canceled there and released and exchanged for the divine's unconditional love for me and my unconditional love for the divine as I move into choosing to heal that relationship moving it back into wholeness, moving it back into union, moving it back into the oneness of who I am in relationship to my creator and the creation. I choose to move as much of my soul and my conscious energy into that divine alignment of truth, of love, of holy forgiveness, We thank you, God, now for canceling all of these and releasing all these energies, exchanging it for divine love and unconditional love. Me for myself and me for the divine within me. Thank you to God and the Creator for changing these programs in time and space, beyond time and space, throughout all planes of existence and all dimensions. I give permission right now to change I hate God, to I give permission to the God in me to change that energy in me, to I love the God in me, I love the God in creation and the God in others. 
I give permission to the divine within me to help me to begin to see through a new pair of eyes, perceive the world in a different way, perceive God in a different way. Changing the program of I hate God to I love God. I don't forgive God to I absolutely choose on all levels of my soul to forgive God and to forgive myself my misunderstanding, my misperceptions of how this lower world runs. And wherever I need to forgive God, thank you to the divine God within me to help me do that. I choose to be freed from any negative connections in thought form between me and the divine creator that created me in this moment in time. I cancel all those curses and I choose them. And all condemnations and all judgments between me and God, I choose them to become blessings. I give permission to the God in me and to the God or divine all around me to bless my life, to bless my relationship with the Creator, to allow myself to feel the joy and the fullness and the connection and the union of my soul with the Creator. It's available for me, it's available for you, it's available for everyone who chooses to experience this. Good, now take some deep breaths in and allow the light, the white light of cleansing to move through your energy field again, move down your physical body and just wash it like a beautiful waterfall of love running over you, cleansing these curses, cleansing judgments and condemnations, cleansing negative oaths, vows and decrees, releasing them from your field. giving permission to neutralize everything so that you can begin the work of doing your, your prayers, doing your devotional work, whatever that consists of for you. If you are committed to a, sp a particular meditation path, follow it, do it, put in the time to do these releases. If it's canceled, just put in it in. Remember as much as you can every day to be in that place of love and forgiveness. Begin to choose to see around you that there is divine order, divine wisdom, divine love in this creation. Even though we sometimes don't feel like it possibly could be, but, but it is. Allow that energy to flow through you and choose to be walking in the light of your truth, your connection to your divinity. Forgive yourself for ever having cursed the divine or your connection. So one of the things in the spiritual path that I follow, the path of the masters, it, all the saints say the same thing. The master power overhead is lending all feasible support. And, you know, I would be looking at my life years ago, and I would be looking at other people's lives, and I'd go, like, where is the feasible support? Why is this person going through such hell? Why am I going through such hell? Why are my family's members experiencing this? Where is the feasible support? Well, it's always there. It was always there. But remember, knock, 
on the door. Jesus used to say, right, knock on the door and it shall be open. You, know, you have to open it. Well, when you've got curses and judgments and condemnations between you and the divine, the divine can be knocking on the door, folks, wanting to help, giving all feasible help at the level that you, powerful you, powerful me, have said that God could move into our lives. Why not make it bigger? Let's just go, okay, I just in case I did this, let's cancel everything. I want the fullness of God available to me in this moment in time. That feasible support, I don't want it to be up against a whole bunch of doors that I've closed. I want it, the door to be open wide and the other door open wide so that I can live and breathe and have joy in my connection to the divine. You can experience this by choosing to let this go. And if you can't let it go all right in this moment, it's okay. It is okay. Darkness falls away as we're able to do it. Just give permission every day to let this go. Let it go. This is an opportunity. This is getting ready for ascension. Moving this light through to continue to wash the darkness away. Just give permission for it to wash through. Now, as this cleansing has occurred, let's now call in the pink light. So we're going to do, some of you may only need a few shades of pink, some of you may need up to 19. So just give permission for whatever number of shades of pink light that you give permission for the divine to come and wash your energy field, wash your embodiment, or wash your chakras with this pink light to nurture you to love you, to support you. Like a mother holding a brand new baby with absolute adoration and love. Allow yourself to be held tenderly by the divine that lives within you, that is you, that is also all around you. So let's do that, let's give permission that is pink light, big waterfall from above, big waterfall coming down, breathing it in, allowing yourself to be loved, held gently and nurtured, giving peace to your body, to your nervous system, quiet to your brain, opening the third eye and your heart chakra to the truth and the light and the love of your being and your connection to the divine that is eternal and infinite. And that the only thing that ever got in the way was ego and mind. Our job is to move that to release it with love, compassion, and kindness for ourselves and the world that we live in. I want to share with you for a moment something that one of my people in my Ascension group shared. She's asked not to be named, so I will not name her. But on the 21st of December, when this process started, of uh, this new ascension with this light washing through the cosmic wave of love. Uh, she did a meditation and she's been doing a lot of work. I've been working with her for, I think about, oh, let's see, 12, 14, maybe 16 years. So she's gone, done a lot of personal work, healing herself, doing self-forgiveness, healing and forgiving others, healing and forgiveness with God. and keeping opening and doing her devotional practices. Uh, so she's done a lot of work. Um, but just know that no matter where you are on the spectrum of beginning 
or you know, who knows if we're ever near the end. But um, th this is what she shared, to be shared anonymously. I was in a place with high peaks to the right. There was a very large white building set into the mountain above a wide courtyard. I looked around and found a golden bell on a post. I rang the bell and a wave of monster energies appeared all around. I was a bit surprised. I rang again and they came closer as if the bell called them. I felt no fear and instead determination. I rang the bell as they came closer. I rang it hard. At each ring as they closed in, the monsters exploded into sparkles. Poof! I kept ringing the bell as wave upon wave of energy monsters arrived and approached and vanished with every clang. Eighteen times. There were no more. I looked around and I said, what next? Other beings arrived, golden light beings. We formed a circle and held hands. A column of light as big as our circle came from the deep in the earth and went up into the sky. My eyes followed it up as we raised our arms together and then back down to the circle. As our arms swung down and back, a shockwave of golden light went out from all of us all around. I asked how many of us? 30. To the left was a broad valley full of light. The earth was happy. So one of the reasons I read that is to let you know that those monsters, those dark forms, those entities, those energies are part of the illusion of what keeps us trapped. And as you do your work to release and give permission to release, they have no power over you. They have no power over me. They have no power over us. When we own the light of who we are, like a sword of energy running through us, where we become the column of light, the darkness has no power over us. Those bugaboos that scare us, those entities and dark energies that can throw us off course, they're there to say, hello, you need to get rid of us. But like this little piece of prose, the monsters can go poof into the light. You choose to anchor light, to be light, to be love, and the light will be there to love and support you. You are already that. It's now for you to recognize that in the mirror. Choose to be that mirror of love and light to your brothers and sisters can also choose that. As you give yourself permission, you give others permission to do the same. The conversation of having curses on God can be a little nerve-wracking for some people. And just know, it's part of the human condition. How many times have we not heard somebody say, is there a God? How can God allow that? And I've had those moments myself. When I have watched over the many years of my life, wartime atrocities, what people do to one another, what military coups do to humans, what different forms of government do to humans, what capitalist industries do to humans. 
And all of it is part of the illusion that we have to let go of. It's all an opportunity to choose to see light, to choose to hold love, and to choose to forgive. And so on that note, I thank you for being with me, for being brave warriors of your spirit, for allowing the divine within you to move in fully, to wash away the darkness so that you can shine because you're way bigger than what you think. Tomorrow, we will be working on forgiving others. So you might want to make yourself a list of people that you think you might want to forgive, that you're stuck with. And it can be a government person, an entire government structure. It can be people outside your family. It could be people inside your family. It could be your coworkers. Doesn't matter. We have to forgive it all. So I look forward to spending time with you tomorrow doing that. Thank you for being with me today. Blessings to all of you. Own the light and the beauty of who you are. That is how we are going to change the world. Fifth dimensional energy is about holding a new thought form, creating a new paradigm. It's on a landscape that is blank that we get to put our impressions on and co-create with divine energy of love. So be all that you can be. Blessings to all of you. Thank you. Namaste. And have an amazing day and an amazing week. This is part two of um, Forgiving God. This is the light language, light love language. Uh, part of what we just did in Forgiving God. And I'm sorry my um, computer was running out of juice, so I couldn't keep going. So here we go. We just did that forgiveness with God. Just go back and stay in that place and anchor into your center. And let's see what the love light language will bring. In terms of doing that, hold on, let me just make one little teeny adjustment here on my computer. There we go. And I'm hoping I get enough of me in there. There we go. So you can see my hands while we're doing this work. All right. Here we go, all you beautiful souls. Part two, forgiving God. Let's anchor that in. So this particular um, love light language will help, like if you repeat this, will help you keep doing that. And what I'll do um, with the person who does my videos is connect these two videos together. We'll splice them together. Well, maybe we'll leave it as part two. We'll just see. We'll see how that works. But uh, just know that it'll, it'll be connected, and it would be good to do one after the other. Here we go. Forgiving God. Okay, let's let that run energy of those beautiful colors run through you. Connect your heart, your mind, your body, your soul all together. Asa. Oh. Asa. O tu amana keo omono asatu. Aya amana ko, aya amana ki asamono atu. Eo atata kayamana sa ai. Ete omono so atupu kata asaya mana koyo ati. Se aya mono. Aso. Teo oso to amana. Omano asakaya mana otu. Asia omanoko asi. 
Te to omoto ko omoto ko omoto ko omoto ko omoto ko ayamana. Eso omono kaya puto wasai. Atakaya oso. Atakaya mono wata asako yo. Esa i omono wasa kaya omono tu. Atakaya omono su. Sa. Kyo koto 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 amana koyo asa iyo ata asa o mono ai asa a kata asa ho asa o mono ai ataka amana sa o tu ata sota Eso mono a teo me takaya saya no no asa to koyo mono a si kea amana sai o to su kea amana si a to katata sata 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 amana so o o e tu Te a a keo o manasi atasa a peo satakaya o manaso ai teo so tu atakaya manasai o to 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 a sa o se te a o tu atakaya se te o katameo amana to to and so it is so let's do the translation I am a divine being I am one with God I cancel and release all negative words and connections between me and the divine. I give full permission for the divine to move through me. And I give myself permission to express divinity, love, light, truth, self-empowerment, and inner knowing as an expression of who I am in the physical body. I release with love all the condemnations I have ever uttered or thought about God in any negative way, great spirit, creator, whatever my background was from this lifetime and any other lifetime. I let it go with love. I anchor the beauty and the truth of who I am and what this creation is that I am in, within me, through me, and all around me. I thank the divine within me for loving me, for forgiving me, for carrying hope and love and faith and truth and wisdom within my being and accessible to me in this moment in time and at any moment in time in which I choose to move forward. I am love, I am truth, I am wisdom, I am knowing, I am forgiven, I am forgivable. I am loving and I am lovable. I am whole, I am free. I love that all of me in this moment in time is choosing to be present with the all that is of creation. And so it is.
sit in the beauty and the power of those words and those sounds in the love light language if it feels good to you enjoy it use it to heal you use it as many times as you need to get you back to center whole and healing i wish all of you a lot of love have a grand day i love you thank you for being you and many blessings to all of you it is an honor to do this work with you i see the god in you please see the god in yourself and so it is